Here's some deans coming in. All right, Jonathan, start us off, please. Jonathan Ramlikhan, Five Reasons Sports. Hey, Amber, I heard you can't sew just now. So uh, what is your special talent? Uh, I can draw. So I, sorry, get closer. There we go. I can draw. So that's kind of my thing that I do outside of fighting. Um, besides, like, I guess I have a special little act with like kids and um, people with autism. But outside of that, I like to draw. Awesome. Awesome. And getting back to the fight game, uh, you had a stretch from 2018 to 2019 where you lost a couple fights in a row, but now you're on a four fight winning streak. What did you feel like you maybe learned during that tough stretch to allow you to grow and be on the streak that you're on right now? Accountability. Everyone asks me all the time, like, how did you go from the skid to where you're at now? And I think it's accountability. Um, it's easy in this fight game to blame somebody else or change camps and do this and do that. But at the end of the day, it's all within you. So you have to look at yourself. What are you doing? What are you not doing? How much are you really there? How hard are you really training? Mental game as well. I switched up the way I approached my mental. I actually started training. Like I have a hypnotherapist named Richard Hart. Well, I've had a few sports psychologists, but right now I'm with my hypnotherapist, Richard Hart, who's really just changed the game for me and taught me how to visualize, gave me a lot of self-confidence and really mentally has brought me to a different level. So yeah, I think taking care of your mental, um, Xing out the BS in your life helps a lot. Like I was super unhappy in my everyday life and there was just a lot of things going on and being accountable. And that's really kind of changed me as a fighter and changed the way I train and the way I approach everything. Awesome. Thank you so much and good luck on Friday. Thank you. Madi. Hey, Amber, this is Madi from Wiz. Hey. Last time out, you had that big knockout win as an underdog with that head kick. How did that feel uh, just proving everyone wrong in that moment? Uh, it feels amazing. You know, I could really care less if people consider me an underdog or what everyone outside of my family, friends and camps think. I proved everybody right that believe in me. And I think that that was the most important part was watching just all of our hard work. Everyone's like, oh, this is a selfish sport, which it is. And it is an individual sport, but it does take a village to get you to the cage, even though it's just you in the cage. And it was just really nice to, you know, not just for me, but for everybody else have some success on how hard we've been training, how hard we've been working, and everyone that's just been with me through this entire long journey that I've been on. Awesome. This time out, you're fighting, obviously, the former champ. What do you feel like you present that may be a threat to uh, Pacheco? The unknown. You know, there's not like there's tape on me, but it's really old. I'm not that same fighter anymore. And obviously the last fight didn't last very long. Um, and I still had a little bit of nervous energy in the first like minute and a half. So I don't think I truly even have shown exactly what I'm capable of in the cage at this level. And I think it's the unknown. Um, I, you obviously know what she brings to the table. We've watched, you know, so many fights of hers for me, like a lot of people don't know exactly what I can do or how much I actually bring to the table. And I think that that's hard. That's hard mentally for people. And that's hard to train for when you don't know exactly what's coming at you. And lastly, what can we expect from Amber touch him up Laybrock this Friday? fireworks. I'm coming. I'm bringing the heat. You know, um, I'm not scared of Larissa Pacheco or who she is or the fact that she used to be a champ. I'm completely honored. And I have, I'm honored to be in the cage with her. I have nothing but respect for her. But at the same time, I know we both bring it and I know that I bring fireworks and my fights are always exciting in one way or another. And so are hers. And I think it's just going to be a really incredible fight, not just for me, PFL, but for the featherweight division altogether. Thank you so much and good luck this Friday. Thank you. Jake. So Amber, since your last win, it seems like in your personal life, right? You've got a lot of fans, sponsorships, a lot of attention coming your way. So with that being said, what has changed in your personal life? Are you feeling like more of a star, so to speak? No, absolutely not. You know, I still got bills and things, you know, everyday stuff 
to deal with. I don't feel like a star at all. I don't live in moments too long, you know, whether they're good moments or bad moments, like there's still a job to be done and I'm not finished until I get to that final fight and I get that belt and that million dollars. Um, but it is nice to have some recognition. It's nice, not just for me, but for my team and for my family and my friends and everybody that, you know, stick with me. I feel like it's more for them than it is for myself because they watch me struggle. They see the tears. They know how hard I've worked. They know the ins and outs of my life. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not riding high. I'm not driving some fancy car, living in some penthouse, you know, like I got everyday struggles and yeah, definitely feeling like a star isn't one of them, but I do appreciate all the love and recognition I've been getting. And I appreciate that my family and my friends and my teammates and coaches can also, you know, feel that success. And with Pacheco clearly having a little bit of trouble with this weight cut and having to do it again in such a short succession, do you think favor or going into the later rounds, this will favor your gas tank compared to hers? Um, yeah, you know, I think that she's done, I think she's a professional, so I'm expecting her to do much better on the weight cut than last time. Um, and I think though that like I prepare for three rounds, I have a really good gas tank. I'm agile. I'm moving, like being a kind of movement fighter is my thing and being able to last long is my thing. Um, a lot of people don't know that or have seen that because I've only, you know, a lot of my fights have ended in the first round. I've only been to so many three round fights, but yeah, I definitely believe that. That, but I also know that she's a professional at the highest level. So I expect us to be right there with each other in each other's faces all three rounds. And then last one for me, you're currently number one in the rankings going up against last year's champion. This, you know, one could say is the biggest fight in the tournament. Do you feel getting this win will almost solidify your chances at a million dollars? Absolutely. Absolutely. I go in there and do my job on Friday. I show up and I perform to the best of my abilities, get my hand raised. Like that million dollars is mine. And I've got the toughest test in the tournament, um, which I'm excited for. I want to prove I'm the best at 145 pounds. And that is through Larissa Pacheco you know, nothing but respect for her, nothing but honor to be in the cage, but this is my time. And I want that more than all of these girls. I've been working harder than all these girls. I've been in this just as long as most of these girls, if not longer, um, you know, besides Pacheco, I may not have as many fights, but I've been on the mats. I've been putting in the hours I've been putting in the work and I'm ready to take what's mine. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Jack. Hey, Amber, how you going? How you doing? How's the fight we going? It's going great. Thank you. Uh, Jack Bowen, uh, Combat Sports UK. I just want to know, now you're no stranger to being an underdog after the first fight in the PFL. Now, out of the whole featherweight division on this card, you are the biggest underdog. Where do yeah. you see that your strengths over Pacheco? And how does it feel being the biggest underdog at this sort of capacity? I could care less. I've been an underdog in most all my fights. So, like, that's just people, you know, speculating. And obviously like she's the champ of last year. Of course I'd be the underdog and I'm, I'm going up against Larissa Pacheco. Of course I'm the biggest underdog, but for me, I'm long, I'm rangy. I'm not worried about that. You know what I mean? The, the lights are not too bright. Um, I'm excited to be here in PFL. I'm ready for the opportunity. I've been mentally, physically, emotionally, just bringing myself up to this level, preparing to the best of my ability so I can go in there and get the job done. And I think that I have everything it takes to beat her and everybody in this tournament, I wouldn't have joined this tournament or took this opportunity if I didn't think I could beat everybody. Thank you and good luck this week. Thank you. Uh, ben, Zion. Okay, this is Zion with the Undisputed World of, of MMA. Amber, I'm going to ask you a fun question, you know, okay. first saying that Jack took some of my thunder, but <laughs> uh, saying that you're dealing with your hypnotherapist and, and everything, how do you envision uh, winning this, this million dollars and what do you see yourself doing with it? How will it change your life, your environment and, you know, for the people around you, what would it mean? Well, me and my hypnotherapist, we work on all scenarios, right? So we've seen this fight going so many different ways. We actually envisioned the PFL opportunity before it had even happened. Um, there's so many different avenues to get to the, the million dollars and to the championship. And that's the beautiful thing about working with somebody like Richard Hart is that we literally address all those things as they come up. Well, I've seen so many ways to finish this fight. I've seen this fight going three rounds. I've seen, you know, 
bad positions, good positions, worst case scenarios, best case scenarios. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about working with a hypnotherapist. And I definitely suggest suggest it to anybody who mentally could be struggling a little bit, um, you know, find a mental coach, whatever that avenue is for you, um, because I think it definitely changes the game. Winning the million dollars will change my life. You know, I come from a place that's not very rich. I, you know, my family been poor forever. We're still poor. And, you know, to have some financial stability will absolutely change my life. Everyone's like, what are you going to buy? What are you going to... I have no plans of like spending my money on anything except just putting myself in a position where I'm comfortable and I'm not worried about keeping the lights on or putting groceries in the fridge anymore. And just having that, you know, fun financial stability, I think we've all been working for our entire careers. Okay. And, and also looking at, um, the, uh, champ that you're, you're going to be going up against. Do you, do you see yourself, you know, trying to go toe to toe, you know, seeing that both of you, you know, you have hands or, you know, do you want to take it to the ground? I mean, how do you see yourself having the advantage over Larissa? Well, I think the fact that I'm unknown is an advantage and that I'm long and rangy. You know, I obviously do have the head kick. So my legs are a lot longer than most people's. It's kind of hard to prepare for with people, you know, with just everyday people that you're training with. Um, I'm expecting us to stand. You know, I know that she's well-rounded. I'm real well-rounded. I am looking forward to just striking with somebody, but I'm fully prepared to take this fight wherever it needs to go or wherever it's going to go. Um, I'm fully prepared for it all, but it will be nice to just kind of, you know, stand there and throw some strikes with somebody and not have to, hopefully not have to worry about someone just pushing me on the cage and trying to outmuscle me. Okay. So my last question, saying that uh, you were talking about the kicks, you know, do you see your, your kicks being the advantage, your striking, you know, being the advantage or, you know, really going to the, to the ground? What do you think you know, will change this for you and kind of get her, get, get in her head, get you in her head. I think my length, definitely my kicks, the ability to be able to strike and kick the way I do. Um, I'm a phenomenal striker. I'm extremely skilled. I train at one of the best striking gyms in the entire world. Um, but my movement is really good as well. I think I have really nice footwork. I think I have really nice evasive footwork. It's hard to, you know, hit something that's moving all the time. I'm conditioned. I'm ready to go all three rounds and just be on my bike and stick and move. And it's going to be hard to deal with somebody who's long and not just standing in front of you and it's going to be hard to deal with somebody who's not just concerned about not getting hit you know and i think that that yeah. is something that people have been doing a lot they just don't want to get hit by her and you know i can care less i've been hit by you know i train with dudes i get hit by strong people all the time um but yeah i think my length definitely puts me above um anyone else in this tournament that could go against her good deal thank you thank you all right last question for amber Corey. Hi, Amber. Hey. Corey from Tunnel Vision Sports. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I just was wondering, with your uh, first round knockout um, and being in first place currently, does that provide any extra pressure or take any pressure off of you coming into this fight with Pacheco? I have no pressure. I've got everything to gain and nothing to lose in this tournament. You know, I'm not the champ. I'm not, I'm already broke, you know? So honestly, everything's a gain for me. Everything's a win for me. Um, it's a beautiful opportunity to be sitting at first place, but I already know that's the first round. Second round is going to happen. There's a bunch of fights before me. These numbers are going to go up and down. Um, it, just the way the tour the tournament format is. So I'm not really looking too much at the numbers as long as I can just get myself to the playoffs. That's all I'm worried about. But yeah, I don't really feel a lot of pressure. Um, I'm just here to perform to the best of my abilities and do what I got to do on Friday night to get my hand raised. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. All right, Amber, thank you so much. Cool, thank you. Appreciate it. Guys. Thank you. We'll just go right next door and then we'll be done for the night. Thank you. Yes, again.